Football is officially back. All 32 NFL football teams will be reporting to training camp by Wednesday. That includes all the veterans. But yesterday, the Minnesota Vikings kicked off their 2024 training camp where the rookies and I believe some of the injured uh, players from last season, so the injured veterans and stuff, report it to camp because it's the early you know, training process. Got to get these young bucks in there. Got to get these guys who maybe have lost a, a little bit of a step, you know, or not really lost a step, but are behind the eight ball, if you will, just a little bit. But they all reported yesterday. I'm not 100% sure uh, if... Yesterday was considered the first day or if today was actually, you know, the first practice that they had uh, just because everyone reported yesterday, make sure everyone's in the building, get their playbooks ready to rock and roll, make sure they're they know their schedule and stuff like that. But uh, today was actually basically the kickoff of training camp for Minnesota, uh, where Kwesi Adolfo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell sat down uh, in front of a bunch of media members and basically gave their expectations of the team going forward for this season uh, and hit on a couple of points. You know, the J uh, Justin, or not Justin Jefferson, uh, the J.J. McCarthy situation, the quarterback battle that we have going on with him and Sam Darnold, uh, who is going to be on the pup list, the physically unable to perform list. If for those of you that don't know uh, what PUP stands for, that is what it means. Uh, and some other cool things that the Vikings are doing and uh, for a certain family uh, in which, well, we tragically lost not too long ago, just a couple weeks ago. And I actually didn't talk about uh, this situation, the passing of cornerback, fourth round draft pick Kyrie Jackson of the University of Oregon. Uh, we lost him not too long ago to a very unfortunate situation, a terrible situation, uh, something that you know, it makes you put, it basically puts life in, in into perspective, right? You never know when your last day is going to be. Um, so, you know, just reach out to your loved ones, your family, your friends, whenever you guys get the chance, uh, just to see how they're doing. See, you know, tell them you love them and stuff like that. If you if you see them on a day-to-day -day basis, give them a hug uh, and, and just do the little things, right? Because in the end, you know, it's, it, it means more to them than it will. Uh, I guess you, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? Just tell them something meaningful, Okay. Uh, but Kyrie Jackson passed away, and the Minnesota Vikings organization only felt the need to help out in a massive way. This is a cool thing that we're doing. I'm glad that the Minnesota Vikings decided to, to handle this situation in the way that they are. Uh, but Ben Gosling, where I got all these tweets from, because he's the one that uh, he's a Viking insider. He knows a lot about the Minnesota Vikings. He's at training camp and stuff like that. He was part of the media. Um, how do you want to say it? Questionnaire, the media thing with or interview with the you know owner or not owner gm and head coach uh but he basically was you know writing all these tweets and he gave us this little piece or a couple things on the Kyrie jackson situation and what the minnesota vikings are going to do so he said that the minnesota vikings are going to cover a significant portion of the funeral expenses for Kyrie Jackson's funeral, which is scheduled for this Friday. Quasi Dofamensa, Kevin O'Connell, Brian Flores, and Matt Daniels, and Durante Jones will be among those in attendance. I believe, you know, these guys saw a lot in Kyrie, uh, thought he was going to be the next one, you know, the next guy. We even seen Jordan Addison uh, was asked a question. He basically was asked, like, who's the one guy people need to watch out for, who's an underdog and stuff like that that's going to have a fantastic year. And he said, <laughs> Kyrie Jackson, watch out for this man. He is an absolute dog on the football field. People, you know, aren't talking about him, but they definitely should talk about him. And uh, unfortunately, right now, we're not talking about him in, uh, in, in, I mean, we're talking about him in a positive way, but not a way we would have hoped uh, to have talked about him. But it's just a sad, sad situation. But the Minnesota Vikings are helping out that family in a massive way, paying for a significant portion of the funeral expenses, which is a great thing for us to do. Uh, and to add some details here, Ben Gosling said that the team will cover uh, more than $20,000 of the expenses for Jackson's funeral, which is basically, if I had to assume, almost all of it, like literally almost all of it. Um, but they also, or, or this funeral is a joint service with Isaiah Hazel, one of Jackson's high school teammates who was also killed in the July 6th crash. Just a very um, heartbreaking situation. It's, it's terrible. Um, I really don't know what else to say other than, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with the family and, and his friends and his loved ones and stuff like that because... It, we we it just we can't be losing people at that at such a young age in that situation like that's just not, nothing we want to go through but i'm glad the minnesota vikings are doing this for the family and on top of that instead of just paying for basically all of the funeral 
Uh, the Vikings also plan to pay out the remainder of Kyrie Jackson's signing bonus uh, to his estate, uh, which is top notch. That that's just you, you can't make that stuff up. That is heartwarming. That's great. Uh, that means his family is going to see a chunk of the money that he well deserved uh, to make in the NFL. I'd have to go look at the top, or I'd have to go look on the internet to see how much his signing bonus was. Uh, but at this point, I really don't care how much it was. All I care about is that his family is getting help, and that the Vikings are actually willing to still pay out this signing bonus to his estate and basically just kind of set up uh, the, the next generation for uh, for his family and maybe even cover the rest of his expenses for the funeral and and all that uh, all, all that unfortunate stuff that they have to have going on. But also another cool thing the Vikings are doing, uh, the players will wear helmet decals and coaches will wear pins with the initials KJ throughout the entire season. Jackson's number 31 will also go unused uh, this season, which is Awesome. I believe Cam Akers wore it last year. Nobody will wear the number 31 for the Minnesota Vikings for this season, which is awesome. I'm, I'm sure they're going to have a nice little vigil uh, for him at, at the first home game, the season opener at home, um, just because it's just it, it's so it's just it, it is it sucks, man. It's, it's nothing you want to see happen. Uh, for somebody so young, just like Kyrie Jackson is. But on another light, let's get to a little bit more uplifting um, topics, if you will. The quarterback battle. Who's going to be the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings? A lot of speculation out there. J.J. McCarthy's going to get the start. No, 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 no. It's going to be Sam Darnold. I don't know. Could it be? Uh, we'll see what happens in training camp because this is where it all boils down. This is where you really see these players set themselves apart and make the starting roster. Well, Kevin O'Connell said, per Ben Gosling, that Sam Darnold will take the majority of the first-team quarterback snaps in training camp. This is exactly what I was saying. Sam Darnold is going to be the starter heading into the 2024 NFL season. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about him. There's a reason we signed him on a one-year deal. He's a bridge quarterback. We draft a guy who's young, who needs to learn the system. We set a plan in place for J.J. McCarthy to slowly work his way up to that starting roster spot and also to be the future of this franchise. However, even though Sam Darnold has taken the majority of the first-team snaps, J.J. McCarthy will get some first-team work as well. That is big news. That means J.J. McCarthy, through this entire process of rookie minicamp, mandatory minicamp, and all those other fun stuff, you know, the OTAs, J.J. McCarthy's been taking it serious. Okay, he, he's been balling. He's been turning heads, if you will. He's been making massive moves, massive strides forward, and uh, really proven that he can be a starter in this league. And this is something I really like to see. Uh, I'm sure this was part of the plan uh, altogether of, hey, let's you know get him used to the offense a little bit during rookie minicamp and mandatory minicamp and OTAs and see how he's ready to see if he's ready to take some first team reps. And I, I think the team says, hey, he's more than ready. We need to see what he's like with this first team with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, uh, you know, Aaron Jones, just kind of seeing how he is maneuvering with the first team. So Sam Darnold, Majority of the first-team snaps, but J.J. McCarthy will also get some first-team snaps, which is something we really, really like to see. Maybe, just maybe, during the preseason, we'll see J.J. McCarthy get a start with the first team. You never know, okay? It's a, it's out, it's not out of the realm, of, uh, out of the realm of possibility. But J.J. McCarthy is going to take some first-team snaps. Now, on to the injury portion of the training camp or the start of training camp. T.J. Hawkinson. Uh, will begin training camp on the PUP list, which is the physically unable to perform list. That's because he tore his ACL uh, at the end of the season. I believe it was like week 16, I want to say, off the top of my head. Uh, Kevin O'Connell did say that. No big surprise there. We already knew this. It's a, you know, um, uh, Kevin O'Connell said that Hawkinson is well ahead of schedule with his rehab from ACL surgery. It's a long process to get back on the football field after such a terrible one, uh, but uh, Hawkinson will start the season or at least start training camp on the pup list. We'll see when he will see action or when his projected start of the season will be, whether that's week one or a little bit later in the season. Also, on top of that, some moves other than TJ Hawkinson being added to the pup list. Uh, Najee Thompson is also added to the pup list as well. I believe he was hurt in the same game or at least towards the end of the season as well. So both those players are on the physically unable to perform list to start training camp. And also, 
Dwayne McBride, uh, running back draft pick the Viking or undrafted free agent a couple of years ago. I do believe potentially maybe a seventh rounder. Uh, he has been added to the non football injury list. Not really sure what happened with that situation. All I know is he's probably injured uh, and he will not be starting training camp, at least practicing with the team at this point. I'm sure we'll see him uh, in the coming weeks, if not next week. So that's what we have from training camp or the start of training camp days one. And I believe today, technically today is day two of training camp. Lots to come this week. I'm pumped up. Football is officially back. I want to hear from you guys what you think about Vikings football going forward. What is your expectation for the Minnesota Vikings this season? Let me know down in the comment section uh, down below. Also, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be much, much appreciated. Have a great rest of your night, folks. And Skull Vikes.